Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. It's Monday. Welcome to it. Thanks for being here. (laughs) Hopefully you survived the daylight savings switch. So stupid we're still doing that. Yeah. Do you know a single person who looks forward? I can't wait for that extra hour. I I haven't recovered from the last one. I know. That's what happens. That's what happens. (laughs) So you're saying, do I know anyone who's excited when they lose the hour? Or... Yes, yeah. I know they're excited. Well, oh, I get to sleep an extra hour yeah. uh, in the fall. That's pretty good. But do you know anybody who's excited that time change is coming? I don't know anybody who says, wow. "Yeah, I need that." I got to bring my crops. Yeah, in. I'm able. I'm able to and, plow uh, later. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, the train schedules are, are, are the more important thing. Uh huh. Of course. Yes. Uh, so I did post a poll. And the coach with the stagecoach when that leaves. Yeah. Because yeah, the horses important. have to be able to see where they're going. So right. I, I I asked the the folks on Twitter. You know, <laughs> do you want it dark later? Fifty seven percent said yes. Uh, yes. If we, you know, if we could get rid of the time change. And okay. Just, uh, uh-huh. and do you want it uh, darker earlier? Thirty-seven uh, percent. Then we got seven huh. percent who just says, uh, "Nope, I don't keep, know." Keep changing the clocks the way we're doing it. Only seven percent, right? I mean, we just pick one. Yeah, I agree. Well, just pick, pick one. Standard time, and let's roll with it. Here's the thing: there actually isn't extra sunlight. The sun <laughs> not, stays out the oh, okay. same length of time. Okay, Mister, I'm a scientist now. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, all of okay. a sudden. So we're not tricking the sun in this? No. No, we're not. We're not elongating the day. It It's the same length. Okay. I uh, hate to break that so. to people. I'm I, not awake, I hope so that I wasn't know. too shocking for some. <laughs> same length of the day, same length of the night. It doesn't matter. We just keep manipulating things, and it's it's stupid. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand why we do it. I hate it. I mean that was the Hate California it. thing, right? With the uh, with the solar. If the sun had only been out a little bit longer, we wouldn't have had the blackout. Was a surprise that yeah. it was going to be dark, or like the CBS News thing, uh, right? If, if the ocean, if the ocean yes. didn't function the way it does, if the world didn't work the way it does, we'd all be dead. It'd be two hundred degrees hotter. Yeah, that's the thing. It does work the way it. Works. I don't think you have that anymore. <laughs> I don't think I, I think, do. No, it no, was I in the other right. machine. Yeah, because we it. looked for it before. I know. Ah. I know. That was a good one. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that was a great one. Uh, scientists say that if the <laughs> Earth's oceans didn't function the way they do, absorbing heat, yes. uh, the temperature would be 200 <laughs> degrees warmer. Back oh. to you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, good thing. Yeah. And here's another thing. If we were the same distance from the sun that Mercury is, we'd be burned up as well. But that's not the case, so why are we worried about it? I don't know. Oh, man. All right. Uh, great to have you with us. Thank you for being here. I love the fallout from Joe Biden's State of the Union speech. It continues. I mean, people like the New York Times think this is his big comeback. Yeah. The guy sucked. <laughs> that was a... Terrible, it terrible speech. It was the worst speech ever given. Now, did he get through it better than some expected? I kind of. I mean, he I didn't guess. freeze at least. He didn't have to say, uh, although he came close. Uh, anyway, huh. anyway, I've said too much. I need to take a nap. It was now. close, but he was juiced he didn't up. Do he that. was juiced up and angry but for the whole slurred, speech. Yeah. He stumbled. Yes. He barely got through it again. Uh, but, man, they're <laughs> acting like they need to take a victory lap. Compared well, to did. the clips that we have yeah, this weekend, we uh, that, spa- uh, that that State of the Union speech was incredible. Because, boy, the clips we have from this weekend, some of the appearances he made. Oh, ooh. we're good? Powerful? No. I'm, no? Saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying worse than oh, the State okay. of the Union. Wow. You're talking about Joe Biden? Yeah. All right, we'll get to him. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're here for the State of the Union recap on Friday... One of the big stories to break from that speech was Joe Biden's personal hate for me. Personally. That was wild. That was wild. <laughs> Pat Gray. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, in the bottom third, they even it mentioned it. was on the it. screen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Rowdy Introvert, who runs patheads.com, was watching coverage of the speech. And uh, so look, they, they, I don't know, on a different channel, they yeah. also had that look on that. the... Uh, <laughs> On a third of the lower Couldn't third. have been on this network. No. So, in addition to President Joe Biden hates Pat Gray, uh-huh. 
Underneath that, Jeffy gets stuck between the moon and New York City. Again. Again. Wow. So you were busy. That there. definitely wow. wasn't on this network because I feel like if it was on this show, that, yeah. would, have, that would have crossed the line. Right. That would almost be fat shaming. What line is uh, that? But, not, not almost. But we, we, it, would it would be, be fat yeah. shaming. Fortunately, we didn't do that here. No. Uh, that wasn't so you're on just this pointing network. it out. I'm just, just pointing, pointing it out. out. Yeah, pointing and it out. somebody else was fat shaming, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm disturbed. <laughs> And disgusted didn't by sound it. like that, though. Yeah, no, I'm like you were. Keith, didn't you hear the <sighs> disturbance in my voice? You heard it. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, it, it really, heard it. It really okay. shakes Pat up whenever it. you see something it does. like that across the line. I Jeffrey. abhor that shame. <laughs> That's why we don't tolerate it here on this show. But speaking of that horrible State of the Union speech last week, Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock, or Warlock, if you like, had a slightly different take than those of us on this program. Here's what he had to say about it. And as I sat the other night and listened to the president's speech, I'll I'll tell you, I said to my colleagues, tell me, me. I I don't know if that was Joe Biden or Joe Lewis, because the man (laughs) came out fighting and he never let up and he's not going to let up. And he also uh, between now and November. Yeah, that was the part that confused me about whether it was Joe Biden or Joe Lewis. I thought they were both dead. And so I can see where he's going with that. But as Joe left the White House Thursday night, uh, we have an even better angle. Uh, We played this for you the other day, but here's a better angle of the don't jump. Yeah, because he had his supporters were apparently on the balcony. That's who was was up there. Up that stairwell. Yeah, so you got to see this. President, how are you feeling, sir? Uh, Joe Lewis. Oh. Hi. Hi. Hello. Don't jump. I need you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Don't laugh. You encourage him. Don't y'all. get it. Stop. <sighs> Seriously, I'd love to know the official count on that. I unofficially, it's about forty times. His handlers times. have got to be no. Don't turn around. Please, no, yeah. don't, don't turn don't, around. Don't, don't look around. up. Don't turn Please. around. Please don't look up. They've got to stop putting people. Well, they have up. really yeah. right. I mean, we've discovered that they actually Jeez. have, and this was just a you know a, a one off with all the fans on the God, every, fans. Every they, chance you know, he gets, he says it. Yeah, that's what it was. They they didn't think he was going to see him. Yeah, he's uh, that's him. probably right. And then probably right. As he's soon just going to he walk stops, out and get in the car. They're like, oh, no. no Somebody's no, no. like, no. no, don't turn around. <laughs> uh, there you go. Don't jump. Oh, man. Uh, coming up on overtime, maybe even on the, uh, maybe before that, uh, we're going to show you the proof that Joe has been recycling the same mm-hmm. exact stuff for all four of his State of the Union speeches over and over and over. He says virtually the same thing. Or in many cases, exactly the same thing. Of course. And by the way, you can sign up for that at blazetv.com slash pat if you haven't already become a subscriber. We're also going to do a nice little taste test. Mm. Uh, Kexi Mm. cookies versus crumble cookies. Is it blind taste test? Blind taste test. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 We're putting it out there. Pressure is on. Putting it on the line. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, Let's. We're trying to do like apples to apples. Except neither of us sell apples, yeah. so <laughs> we decided to do cookie to cookie, trying to do the same flavors. They they're a little bit different because they don't do exactly the same stuff we do. So, but we did our best. So we'll see. We'll see how it works. Okay. We're putting like for instance, here's a good example. We're putting their kale cookie up against our chocolate chip cookie. Let's yeah, see who fair. you like better. <laughs> All right. Same thing. That seems same thing, right? Same thing. <laughs> exactly the same thing. <laughs> No, we're actually trying to be very fair about it. We we want an actual blind test, taste test, so we're going to have to poke your eyes out, okay. and uh, you won't be able to see Wait, which cookie. But you'll still taste. We're not going to affect. So it won't affect your taste buds. So you're taking our eyes, but we get free yeah. cookies. Yes, that's a good deal, Jeff. Good trade off. Right? Let's do that. Let's, I like it. It's a I'll good trade off. I'll give you one eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to keep one. And don't forget to join us on social media as well on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Look for Pat Unleashed. And the show's uploaded every day at youtube.com slash Pat Gray, where you need to subscribe as well. Mm-hmm. Chris is always posting new videos, where, uh, and we hope you'll share those with people yeah. who need to be watching the show. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, you can discuss the show instead of making small talk. Well, how are you doing today so far? Watch this clip and then we'll talk. Yeah. Uh, back to the fallout from Joe's State of the Union speech. Last Thursday, as he was leaving the House chamber 
He was talking to Senator Michael Bennett and others when that hot mic caught him talking about uh, his conversation with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Here's what he said on the hot mic. We've got to keep pushing what you're doing on the humanitarian stuff and all this stuff. So, I told him, baby, show me this. I said, baby, you know, I'm going to come to Sir, just... <laughs> oh, wow. The handler comes in. That was good. That was good. Now they're telling him, you're on that mic, your mic is hot, your mic mm-hmm. is hot. And he said, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, he said, good. No, but he said, BB, we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. Yes. We're so, going to have a come to Jesus about meeting. For the Jew. About yes. <laughs> <You're> t- <Okay. laughs> for, for the Jewish person. Yeah. I was just trying to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. Uh, yeah, isn't that great? That's great. And that's fascinating that he would, and, but that's the attitude, right? It we're sure gonna, is. We're treating him like, I don't know, underlings, like mm-hmm. servants, like. I, it's despicable. It's despicable. Uh, from a different president, it might not be as bad. I don't know. I, but I just can't imagine Trump saying that about Bibi Netanyahu. Uh, it's so disrespectful, and it's so egomaniacal. Like, you're you're going to have a come-to-Jesus meeting with him? First of all, it's way inappropriate when you're talking about a Jewish person. <laughs> right. <laughs> Secondly, uh, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Wow. Uh, but it's it's fascinating because apparently he he drew a red line yeah. for Israel, uh, telling them that they dare not attack Rafa. That's where everybody's gone since they were, you know, since this thing started. Everybody fled to Rafa, and now they want to go into Rafa and root out Hamas there. Israel claims they've killed six, 13, 13 or fourteen thousand Hamas troops. Thirteen thousand. That's a lot. It's a lot. Now, the press just dutifully continues to report all the numbers being vomited right. out by the Gaza Health Ministry, which is controlled by Hamas. And every article I ever see uses their 30,000 dead number. And the addendum that, and that's mostly women and children. Yes, they always do. Every that time. Head. Yeah. Every time. Like you're being controlled by Hamas. Okay, you must report that there are 30,000 and it's mostly women and children. Mostly women and children. (laughs) Is it? Why would you believe that when everything else they've ever said is a total and complete lie? Why why would you just accept the facts and figures that are coming from Hamas, essentially? I, I, I I don't understand that the Western media is just falling right in line with that. Just regurgitating everything they say. It's despicable. It really is. Anyway, uh, Joe was asked about that hot mic moment where he talked about the come to Jesus meeting with uh, Netanyahu. Why does does Mr. Netanyahu need a come to Jesus meeting? What are you hoping to achieve? I didn't say that in the speech. What about after the speech? You guys eavesdropping on things. uh, uh, Does that show your level of frustration with him on humanitarian aid? Does he need to be doing more? Unreal. Yes, he does. Wow. Wow. He sucks. Ah, oh, he's the worst. Oh, you guys eavesdropping on me. You still said it. Right. Sir. You're eavesdropping. Yeah, you're the President of the United States. You were standing in a public building, a government building. Uh-huh. That's not eavesdropping, mm-hmm. old man. And the microphone was on. That's not the press's yeah. fault. That's your fault, stupid, yes. for running around babbling with a microphone on you. <laughs> and you said, don't tell anybody, yet we all heard it, sir. Yeah. Pathetic. Guy's the worst. He's just absolutely the worst. And then uh, he was asked about it again in an NBC interview that he did. You were caught on a hot mic after Mm -hmm. your State of the Union address Mm -hmm. talking to Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Senator Mm -hmm. uh, Michael Bennett Mm -hmm. uh, saying, quote, I told him, BB, and don't repeat this, but you and I are going to have a come to Jesus meeting. What do you mean by that? What I meant was, it's an expression used in the southern part of my state. Oh, serious pause it. Media. And we know the expression, and, uh, doofus. We know the well, we've expression. We've all heard it and used it. And it's not from Delaware. <laughs> so, no, no, no. Southern Delaware. Yeah. Southern Delaware. Yeah. Southern Delaware. Just on the southern of tip of Delaware. <laughs> Otherwise, you've never heard that expression. Here's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, he's such an awesome. insult to our intelligence. Uh, that is awesome. Spectacular. Oh. He's 
Let's see more. The worst. Yes. In the southern part of my state, meeting a serious meeting. And uh, it was, uh, I've known B.B. for 50 years, and he knew what I meant by Lucky him. Diddy. <laughs> no Diddy. kidding. Yeah, he he definitely uh, yeah, knows he knew. what you meant. Yeah, he does know. Yes. He absolutely knows. And he's rejecting what you said to yes. him, Yes, by the way. He's saying, no, we're, we're going in. We're going to do... See, Israel's going to do what they have to do for their survival. And they should. Absolutely. They should. When we're trying to hamstring them and tell them what they can and cannot do for their own protection after the slaughter that they endured on October 7th, it's despicable. It's just let them take care of business. Let them destroy Hamas. I don't want civilians to get hurt. But it's going to happen, and it's Hamas's fault, not Israel's. Correct. Man. And should you try to limit the civilian casualties? Well, yeah, of course. of course. And they are trying to limit. I mean, they're giving them all kinds of warnings. They're telling them where they're going to bomb and when. They're telling them it'd be a really good idea if you left this area now because we're coming for you. What, what more do you want? They're airdropping food. I mean, <laughs> it's incredible. In fact, five people got murdered, killed by an airdrop of food that fell on top of them the other day. Four. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> Man. I mean, we're building a port. Uh, yeah, right. We deliver yes. food. Right. And yeah, they know about it. And they're fine with it. They're allowing it. I mean, crazy. Yeah. So there was so much in this interview. Jeez. He was yeah, asked was. about Israel's pursuit of Hamas. He has a right to defend Israel. A right to continue to pursue Hamas, uh-huh. but he must, he must, he must pay more attention to the innocent lives being lost as a consequence of the actions taken. He's hurting, I, in my view, he's hurting Israel more than helping Israel by making the rest of the world. It's contrary to what Israel stands for, Wait, uh, and I think it's a big mistake. So I want to see a ceasefire. You know, people said the same thing about us when we went into Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. You're hurting your image a lot more than you're helping the situation. Do we listen to that and stop? Oh, okay, you're right. You're right. I'm going to lay down our arms and come home. Okay. Yeah. I, I wish we would have, actually, but that's, I know. that's another story. But, but we didn't, then we wouldn't, no. and we shouldn't listen to others. we got to do what we think is right for us. So does Israel. So he was also asked about Hamas itself. Do you think Hamas actually wants a ceasefire? No. Well, I think Hamas would like a total ceasefire across the board because they then they, they would see they have a better chance to survive and maybe rebuild. <laughs> but that's not what I think the vast majority of people think. That's you the have point. To look. look. He is oh. so gone. He's oh, lost. the worst. Hello. Hello. After yeah. what happened in World War II. My word. And the carpet bombing that took place. Oh, mm-hmm. What happened was we ended up in a situation where we changed the rules of the game. What constitutes legitimate rules of war? Wait, boy, that brain was malfunctioning. Oh yeah, bad. Do you think he realized he was he was making he was Hamas making the case point. for why they shouldn't stop? Yes. Yeah. Hamas was <laughs> because that's exactly what they want to do. Yes, they want the ceasefire. Well, they do want the ceasefire on Israel's part, not yeah. on their part. But yeah, stop attacking us so we can rebuild and attack you again. That's exactly why Israel isn't stopping. Neither would we. Nope. If we got attacked by Canada or Mexico on a regular basis like this, we'd be fed up with it too. And we'd want to put a stop to it by eliminating the threat. That's what they're trying desperately to do. Let them do it. Oh, man. I don't know. Uh... You know, when you think about the scale of what happened to them on October 7th, it's pretty startling. I know. But he is, you know, look, he's trying to walk that fine line because... Yeah, because he's, he's getting all kinds of world, flack. You're darn right. Yeah. I mean, his crowd yeah. is definitely uh, anti-Israel. The leftists are pissed yeah. out of their minds over yeah. it. So, yeah, they don't, uh, they don't and like that. And there's no line. I mean, he can't... There's. As, he can try to walk that line all he wants. They don't care. They don't. No. Uh, all right. Let me tell you about uh, Birch Gold. Financial experts thought we were in the clear. They were anticipating around six rate cuts by the Fed this year, and then the inflation data came out higher than expected. Of course. Uh, this just isn't going away. It can't go away because of what we've been doing to ourselves. U.S. is $34 trillion in the hole 
and we just keep printing money. And we go into debt another trillion dollars every 100 days. Eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took 250 yeah. years to get the first trillion, and now it takes a yeah. hundred days. Bogging me down with facts. For the next trillion. Uh, so you can either bury your head in the sand, or you can do something about it and diversify a portion of your savings into gold with Birch Gold Group. Gold is your hedge against inflation, and Birch Gold makes it really easy to own. They'll help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold, and you don't even have to pay a penny out of pocket to do it. So text PAT to 989898 and get your free info kit on gold. Just go through it, read up on it, figure out if it's right for you, and they'll do the rest. You can protect your savings from persistent inflation with gold. So text PAT. To 989898 right now. Pat Gray Unleashed. Oh, good. Then we have uh, Joe discussing his last visit to Israel. Should be enlightening. I sat with him and I sat with a war captain. I said, look, don't make the mistake America made. America made a mistake. We went after bin Laden until we got him. But we shouldn't have gone into Ukraine. I mean, we, should, we, we shouldn't have gone into um, the, the whole thing in Iraq and Afghanistan. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't what? necessary. It just caused more problems in the race than it's been cured. <laughs> I don't know, man. Don't. Oh, I don't know. Man. We need a translator. What? Uh, First, we chased bin Laden into Ukraine. You remember that? That was, a, yeah. it was like, where in the well, world is... It was a dumb place to chase him because he wasn't there. Right. And That's what so, took so long. Yeah. So. That's and why we're he stumbling against... around in Ukraine for 10 years. Wasn't he against going after <laughs> bin Laden? I feel like he was against him. Because remember, he used to give Obama credit. He's like, that's a, a tough, most, tough decision. Tough decision. Tough decision in 500 years. Yeah, he was against going after bin Laden. Yeah, he was. Yep. And then... I, Incredible. I don't know, man. The guy, his brain just... It's like when he speaks, it's like it's like you're like trying to start a fire. Mm -hmm. Come on, are we going to spark this? Are you going to keep talking? Mm -hmm. Pretty bad. Mm -mm. Uh, and uh, what about going back to Israel? Should oh, you do that? I love him there. Some have suggested you should go back to Israel mm. uh, and, and stay address there. the Knesset, the Israel, <laughs> Israeli yeah. about that? Is yeah, that, that something you would do? Yes. Yes. Uh, hello. Well, <laughs> would that have to be at the invitation of the prime minister or could that be at the invitation of the president? God. I'd rather not discuss it more. Okay. Why? Does that mean that that has been that has been discussed? The possibility of going back to Israel and addressing the Knesset. I don't mean anything. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's like, okay. He's realizing. All right, I'm dealing with a moron here. I'm dealing with a brain dead individual. That's incredible. I mean, yeah, the look on his it? face. It was just yeah. frozen like the. Uh, That's incredible. They're not discussing it anymore. I'll come on. She one more follow up. Yeah, question. You, he can't discuss it anymore because he doesn't understand it. He doesn't get it. Like, what? Well, just what look at mean? his face. What do you mean? Some have suggested you just should go. Watch his back face. To That's it. Uh, Somebody well, suggested you, you should you just leave a, this country forever. Is that something you would do? <laughs> yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. good. Next one. Two one thousand. Three one thousand. Would that have Four to be at the invitation five. of the prime minister, or could that be at the invitation of the president? Eight. Nine. I'd, I'd rather seconds. not discuss it more. Ten seconds. Oh, okay. Frozen. Does right. that mean that that okay. has been Whatever. that has been discussed? The possibility of going back to Israel and Doesn't addressing the Knesset. Doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I don't okay. know what it means. <laughs> okay, old I man. really don't wow. know. Time to go back to your room. Uh, are you? Are we speaking English here? What? It, Doesn't mean anything. I don't know what it and means. I don't want to really. talk about it anymore. Incredible. Amazing. Yep. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. Uh, all right. And Joe referred to the killer of Lake and Riley. As being an illegal during the uh, yeah during the during the, during speech. the speech, which we talked oh, about dare, Friday, yeah. that they were upset about it. Yeah, they were. and they continued to be upset mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but during your response to her heckling of you, you mm. used the word illegal oh, when talking yeah. about oh. the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley, an undocumented person. Uh, uh, I shouldn't have used illegal. I should. It's undocumented. And look, yeah. when I spoke I about know. the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked mm. about in the border was. That his the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. 
I talked about what, what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat He's any. He's never talked about any, polluting any blood. With disrespect. Polluting the blood. Look, they built the country. The hell the reason our blood? economy is growing. Okay, the lying. Uh, it, he talks about is, the vermin and polluting the blood. It's unacceptable. He's talk, when he talks about vermin, he's talking about the people who are coming here and committing crimes and raping people and all of that kind of stuff. He's not saying they're all vermin. And he's, I, to my knowledge, I've never heard him say the phrase, the pol- they're polluting, polluting our the blood. blood. Yeah, he said they're poisoning the blood of our country. Something mm-hmm. like that, yeah. I need to see that. I've never, okay. I've never seen that. Yeah. Never seen that. Wow. Um, what, is that the same people, though, that are raping and pillaging and doing criminal activity? Is that who he's talking about? Or was it in reference to everybody coming across the border? Because there's a big difference there. Mm-hmm. There sure is. But he actually apologized. He actually apologized yeah. for using the word illegal. <laughs> but he didn't apologize, as far as I can tell, for misnaming no, Lake and Riley and calling her Lincoln Riley. No, he did not. Twice. <laughs> so despicable. It's just outrageous. Uh, and then he went on to say, uh, do we have this one? He was <laughs> trailing his... Do we have the one where he says that uh, they... Look, look, they built the country. Uh, Illegals. Oh, yeah. Illegals built... Illegal yes. aliens built this country? What? Yeah, that was part of that. What an outrageous lie yes. that we need to call out, this crazy pandering. How many of the 56 founders of this nation were illegals? Because I, I think it was... Bring down the one. Gary. Uh, none. <laughs> Zero. The immigrants who came here legally and assimilated into our country, many of them, yes, contributed to the building of this country, but illegal aliens did not build this country. Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> they, look, they built the country. No. <laughs> no, they did not. But I'm sure that's going to be the new talking point, uh, that illegal aliens built this country. I just, It's despicable. I just can't take it. Uh, But Joe was uh, doing some traveling this weekend, made this bizarre statement in his speech where he admits he added more to the national debt than any other president. (laughs) We cut the deficit. (laughs) And we added more to the national debt than any president in his term in all of history. Uh, Uh, Donald Trump. Oh, okay. So there you go. He admitted it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Then he talked about guns and tobacco. Imagine if, imagine if tobacco had the same limitations companies that <laughs> gun manufacturers. The only major corporation in America, industry in America, America. you cannot sue. What? That's not true. Is what? He gun keeps saying that, too. Gun. Think guns, about he says. that. He, think about that. You okay. think about it. Uh, it's, the it's pharmaceutical a lie. industry is on the line. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. He's so... People are suing... The gun industry right now, manufacturers are being sued. What are you talking about? You can't sue the gun industry. Of course you can and have. People have. I'm so tired of the lies. Jeez. And apparently Joe wants Pennsylvania to send him uh, to Congress. Okay. (laughs) Well, he's only the president. Right. Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. I have a message for you. Okay. Send me to Congress that I can support this (laughs) right... What? I promise you, oh. if we take back Congress, we we will restore Roe v. Wade as the law of the land. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He wants to be a Congressman. I mean, Pennsylvania, I, I, I send like me to Congress. He's sending me the Congress. No, that's not what he said. I think it is. Sorry, that's not what he I said. I think it is. Play it again. Let's listen. Hello. I'm Pennsylvania. I have a message for you. Uh huh. Send me to Congress that I can Two. support. Send me, send me right. to Congress. I promise you. Send me to Congress. Take back Congress. We- <laughs> Make Joe a congressman again. I'm for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'd be better than where we currently are. Well, that's true. Yeah. However, <laughs> the send, Congress. Send me to, that's not what he said. Mm-hmm. Send me to Congress. <laughs> what a buffoon. <laughs> what a brain-dead buffoon. That's ah, fun. Yeah, it's fun. Welcome to Monday. <laughs> More Pack Gray Unleashed coming up.
Pat Gray Unleashed. Got some tweets here. Anna for Real T tweets Chelsea Handler's a fan of daylight savings times, extra hour of moonlight. <laughs> I didn't know, and this is true. I didn't know until I was 40 years old that the sun and the moon were not the same thing. Okay. All right. That's Chelsea right there. That is so weird. Until she, she's 49 now. Just turned 49. Uh, when she was 40, she found out the sun and the moon were separate and distinct entities. <laughs> All right. All right. Why would you admit that? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. It's embarrassing. Nancy's vodka-soaked dentures, for once, Biden just plagiarized his own speeches instead of someone else's. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimmy Dimples tweets, Biden needs Biden needs a come-to-Jesus meeting. He needs to repent. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody needs to come to Jesus, it's, it's Joe Biden. Waggling snoobs. Tweets, I feel sometimes you guys need to remind Jeffy his mic is hot. <laughs> what do you mean? It's possible. Yeah, it's possible there are times. Uh, MC Stevens, Southern Delaware, where all those religious bigots must live. <laughs> well, there's a saying in the southern part of my state. Right. Okay, like we've, is ne- it, we've never heard is it doofus? to Jesus. <laughs> so ridiculous. That's hilarious. Well, I think they're, he's, he's confused by the fact that people ask, ask him, what did you mean by that? You know? So he's trying to, he's really, um, you must not understand that expression. No, we're trying to figure out why you would say that to Benjamin Netanyahu, a Jewish person, and the head of a sovereign nation. <sighs> Crazy. Anyway, anyway, I, I've said too much. Uh, Biden also discussed the U.S. Capitol, of course. Oh. That's got to come up. You know, the insurrection, and all of that. Well, oh. Last night... In the U.S. Capitol, mm. the same building where our freedoms came under yeah, assault yeah, yeah. July oh, the 6th. Okay. okay. Wait, when? Oh, is yeah. that it? Catch that? July 6th. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so much. Wait, what? Uh, let's listen 6th. one more time. Mm. Listen to this. Last night, mm-hmm. in the U.S. Capitol, the same building where our freedoms came under assault on July the 6th. Not <laughs> July, uh, July the 6th. Can't see the prompter. Mm. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he can't ad-lib January 6th. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Uh, but, you know, we see it every day. Yeah, we do. It should not be a surprise anymore, and it really isn't. It's just amazing. Um, all right, here's the uh, illegals built this country on rock and roll thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but during your response to her heckling of you, you used the word illegal oh, when talking no. about the man who allegedly no. killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look, me. when I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was uh, that his, the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I he talks about it. what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any... any any of these people with disrespect. Except for Look, they Republicans. Built the country. Look, the reason built our economy is growing, we have to control the border and, uh, and more orderly flow, but uh, I, I don't share his view at built all. The so country. You, you regret using that word. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, he doesn't regret, apparently, misnaming the victim, mm-hmm. but the no. criminal, the murderer. I really shouldn't have said that. He needs so to have respect. They built the country, they and the country. they're the reason our economy is growing. God, I, I, just, I just there's no words for this. I, guy. There really aren't. <laughs> there really are not. God. At a speech in Georgia, he was interrupted by a protester. Yeah, that's always. I say thank you. Pause it for a second. What's the guy yelling? Uh, something about Palestinians. Okay. Of yeah, course. you're the dictator, and uh, it oh. was about the Palestinians. All right. Let's hear it. So it's important what he said. Start from the beginning, if you would, because that's uh, it's good stuff. We don't want to miss a moment of a Joe Biden speech. I say thank you. Boy, the minions. 
Germans are trained to chant uh, four more years when I this happens. That. He wanted to confirm it too. He was already there. Mm -hmm. Look, thank you. Thank you. Look, I don't resent. I don't resent. I don't resent his yeah. passion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of Palestinians who are being unfairly victimized. Are there? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, jeez. Look, point those out to me. Yeah, I know. Mm. I, I'm sure innocents have died in this, as they do in every yeah. war, and it's tragic. It really is. Uh, nobody wants it. Nobody I know of, well, except for Hamas, they want it. I mean, I read an article over the weekend with the Hamas representative in the United States uh, talking about uh, how us building that pier, the ramp uh, on the Gaza Strip to bring in you know, uh, ships right. so that we can better get them food and all of that. It's a step in the right direction. But then he goes on to talk about Israel and their genocide and how it's all completely uh, outrageous and he wants the international community to step in, but then completely excuses October 7th because of oppression. Right. And they, they're just doing what they have to do and what they legally have a right to do. All right, so slaughtering the 1,200 people for no reason... They're not occupied, by the way. Let's get that straight, too, right up front. They're not occupied. The Gaza Strip has not been occupied by Israel since 2005. And they completely excuse all of that, and so do their supporters. But the response from Israel has to stop. I mean, it's And if they cared incredible. so much about their people... They wouldn't have think, done this in the first place. you think that maybe they would have already started to, uh, you know, started to or finished uh, their own port. Yeah, right. To well, bring in goods. I mean, they can't do anything on their own. What have they built with their freedom, with Hamas as their elected officials? Yeah, I mean... What no. do they offer? Nothing. What do they produce? I... <laughs> Anybody buying goods from the Gaza Strip? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I'm, Jeez. I'm willing. I'm willing to buy a jacket if it's if it's you? made. Yeah, you a know, Palestinian made, jacket, a Gaza mm -hmm. Strip jacket. Okay. Sure. Or the West Bank, maybe. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I believe their number one export is explosives. <laughs> Probably. So what they do? Crazy. And he and Jill had a national call to action with supporters. <laughs> Here were some uh, key moments from that. <laughs> and what, what, we're, what they're going to do is to ensure a national, uh, really d endanger our national security. They're going to exp expend, a, you know, a, are they going to expand personal freedoms? Well, that's what we're going to do. They're going to do everything to not grow our economy. Literally, there's no, they have no platform. <laughs> they're all about, they're against everything, not for anything, except the things that are the wrong things. What they're running on, I, I'll, I'll tell you what they're running on. Okay. Tell me. They're running backwards. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. about the future, uh -huh. not the past. But guess what? What? We what? won't let them win the past. Yeah, we know. We, really? We won't let them win, win, in, the win, the past? win the past? Well, history is watching. <laughs> oh, no. Go make the second. Say it again. Yourself, say it because it's so powerful the first time. I just you need to let say you know. it again. History, history is, is watching. watching. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow, Jeffy. Well, I know. Deep, deep and profound. History is eavesdropping, apparently. Profound. Man, he could not get through that. Was he re I mean, surely he's reading it, right? Has to be. And he still can't I mean, watch that again. That's <laughs> I, phenomenal. I like I like uh, Jill's I, I happy. Wanna, Jill I, loves it. She there. Yeah. is really getting pissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was able to muster a mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and a head nod. All right, let's see it. I mean, what are you supposed and to what, nod what about? We're, what they're going to do is ensure a national, uh, really d yeah. endanger our national security. Oh. They're going to exp expend, a, you know, expend a, you know, uh, are they going to expand personal freedoms? Well, that's what we're going to do. <sighs> they're going to do everything when? to not grow our economy. Literally, there's no, they have no platform. They're all about, they're against everything, not for anything, except the things that are the wrong things. Oh what God. they're running on, I, I'll, I'll tell you what they're running on. Wow. They're running backwards. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's about the future, not the past. Mm -hmm. But guess what? What? We what? won't let them win the past. And she wants he won't to, let she, them win the past. The past. Yeah. She wants to strangle him right there. I know. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, you're not going to let him win the past, the past. old man? Yep. What are you talking about? What are you even talking <laughs> yeah. about? It's a good line. Yeah, oh, great. Good line. Yeah.
I'm not uh, going to let them win the past. He needs to repeat it because it was so good. <laughs> We're not going to, but guess what? Mm. We're not going to let him win the past. Okay. We're All not right. going to let him win the past. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't. That sucks. <laughs> Guy is such a dude. Uh, you want to finish up that little uh, promotional video uh, they did there? I do in just a moment. Okay. But first, <laughs> let me tell you about uh, a miracle made. You know, traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat. That's really nasty. Oof. I don't like thinking about that, frankly. <laughs> I know. It's not good. <laughs> it's gross. But Miracle Made offers a whole line of self cleaning, eco friendly bedding, like sheets and pillowcases and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA. Miracle Made sheets are thermal regulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. There's nothing worse than being too cold or even worse, maybe too hot during your uh, your bedtime. These sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaves them staying cleaner and fresher three times longer than other sheets. No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands, and they feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. So stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores and cause all kinds of problems for you. Go to trymiracle.com slash pat and try Miracle Made Sheets today. Whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, you can order them today and save over 40%. And if you use the promo code PAT at checkout, you'll get three free towels and... Save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product, they back it up with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you're not 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Nothing to lose here. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash pat. Use the promo code pat and claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash pat and treat yourself. Gray is unleashed. All right, we got one more clip from Brain Dead Biden uh, to share with you because he's he had some precious moments over the weekend, and we want you to know about him. You know, so that you're going forward today, be informed, fully informed. Yeah. Here he is, folks. We have come through pretty tough times, mm. and I know, mm. I know, we got a lot more to do. Mm. We had to stay off. A, we, we 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 had to start. <laughs> off by vaccinating America. Whoa. Trump stood flat-footed during that period of time. Oh, my God. Pause it. He came up with a vaccine. <laughs> Love it or hate it, he pushed that vaccine forward, and it was under his watch. It happened. The one that they're still trying to get us to inject into our bodies. What are you talking about? That, that's his big push. Uh, Vote for me. Uh, I made sure that you got that poison injected in you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, well, both candidates really are going to be proud of that, yeah. which is unfortunate. But I know, but he that's had more. Uh, that's it. Oh, that was it. That was oh. It. oh, okay. Jeez. Oh, it's agonizing. It's agonizing. There's just not a word adequate. <laughs> not, well, not one that you can say at least on the air. <laughs> Go okay. make the sex with yourself, old man. <laughs> that's what you can say. That helps a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just that's a dad. little bit. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the Trump campaign has made a new ad focusing on Joe's age. Now, Joe made one, too, and he talks about, hey, look, I'm not a young man. I know that. But then he goes on with the whole, it's, ideas. it's not about yeah. age, it's about ideas. It's, BS, that's the same crap he used in, love the, with. in the speech. Yeah, he so loves that. Yeah. stupid. All right, but here's uh, Trump's campaign ad. Look, I'm not a young guy. That's no secret. Clips of him falling over, tripping, shaking hands with the air. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Picking his nose. <laughs> wow. Sleeping. Wow. Hello? Hello? Anyway. <laughs> 
come 2024. Wow, that's brilliant. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. That made me feel better. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Donald Trump and the people who were responsible for that ad. Wow. That seems pretty effective to me. No kidding. Is that the guy you want overseeing the nation for the next four years? Anyway. I don't think so. I don't think so. Kamala apparently thinks Joe is uh, going to lose in November. Watch oh, this. Oh, whoa, really? Mm-hmm. Why not do it by executive order? The American people deserve leadership that's about fixing problems. Mm. And that's why he's going to lose in November. <laughs> oh, oh. I think that was at the tail end of some confusing talk about Trump and yes. Biden. So, whatever. Still, <laughs> still, the way she added that so close to them clearly talking about Joe. Yeah. Made it humorous. Yeah. Uh, it's no secret Joe is losing support from black voters. And House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries was asked about that. That core Democratic group that he won with about 90 percent back in 2020 is showing just it seems like a lack of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. How does President Biden fix it? Well, the polling has been all over the place, but I'm confident that at the end of the day in November, the overwhelming majority of African-Americans, Caribbean-Americans, black voters throughout the country will support President Biden, understand that he has delivered over and over and over again on issues of concern. Mm. Has he, though? Oh, boy. Has he? What world are you in, bro? Uh, I have got uh, evidence of the exact opposite. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Where people are um, in favor of Trump's position on virtually every important issue. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So when guys like uh, Keem or uh, Chuck Schumer mm-hmm. talk about how infectious and how exhilarated they were coming off of that speech yeah. last mm-hmm. week, mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. That's not true. No, not exactly. No. So you're saying um, that the numbers numbers are, are, are suggesting that a Trump different story should if you win will. easily in the fall. Yeah. Well, if you care about any of these issues, the answer would be yes. If Trump should Correct. win easily. Uh, let's see. He's got a 49 percent favorable rating on the economy compared to 37. So it's 49 37 Trump okay. on the economy. Okay. On inflation, 45 31 Trump. Uh, on crime, 41 35 Trump. On immigration, 45-29, Trump. So here's my question. Will Joe Biden have more or less than 81 million votes waiting for him in November? I'm going to say less. I'm going to say less. I have to. I have to say less. Yeah. In order to live with myself and <laughs> my country, I have to think less. God save the queen, man. Unleashed. Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. Welcome. Thanks for being with us. Some tweets here. Uh, Bulldog Mama. Let me get this straight. A Gold Star father is arrested for shouting out about dead Marines, but the Hamas supporters are placated? Gotcha. No, they, they hauled him out. They hauled who out? The Hamas supporters. I mean, well. They didn't arrest the, him. The, uh, Did they? I don't. They hauled him out of that speech, though. Uh, OG Thor, typically when you sue a manufacturer, it's because their product is defective. Firearms aren't defective. The people are. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dave Owens, no, no, no. We want Jeffy's mic to stay hot. Great (laughs) material. Uh, Not of this world. Strap in, gentlemen. The world ends in November. Mm. Yeah, I hope not. Oh, stop. Don't make (laughs) us think like that. I know. Well, I mean... If Biden's elected again, reelected, yeah, that would that would that'd be a bad sign for the future. <laughs> that'd be a really, really what bad kind of, sign. What kind of what kind of stuff is on those sheets? <clears throat> what kind of bacteria is on the sheets? <laughs> I world ending bacteria. Yeah, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week, Charles Barkley expressed displeasure uh, at blacks who support Donald Trump. And uh, so now he's calling out Democrats. I bet he got a little bit. Oh of, yeah, got a little bit of feedback from this. Plus, this is a good. You know, look, nobody knew the show existed. Yeah, right. Right. That's I mean, true. King Charles. Yeah. Uh, nobody knows the show's been on for 
two or three months now, and it was wow. Know, has it really no traction whatsoever? Nobody's watching it. How about so that? they finally got some traction with one story where he's beating up, you know, Trump, Trump supporters. supporters. Yeah. So now at least he's got some, you know, got some notice. Yep. And here's what he says now. And I'm obviously I'm only speaking for myself. The mm-hmm. reason I think the Democratic Party and Mr. Biden, President Biden, is losing black votes is they only care about black people every four years. Mm-hmm. They come into our neighborhoods and say, we're it's gonna make stuff better. Man. We're gonna do this, mm-hmm. do this, do this. And then finally, us black people are like, yo, man, other than my ability to dunk a basketball, all my neighborhoods are still the same, our schools are still the same. And that's why I think black people are leaving disappointed in the Democratic Party because I ain't gonna yeah. lie. I voted mm-hmm. Democratic every time just because I thought thought it was gonna help black people mm-hmm. and poor people. Because black people and poor white people, they're in the same boat. And like I didn't care who the president was. I'm not going to lie. But I voted. Mm. I only voted Republican one time in my life, and that was for John Kasich. And I didn't even know he couldn't win. But then I'm starting to look like, man, I understand why black people are leaving, uh, want to vote for somebody else. Because every four huh. years, they come into our neighborhood and say, man, we're going to make things better for you. When Donald Trump compares his plight Uh-oh. with that of the black person, Uh-oh. that is what I had a problem with. Uh-huh. Now, I do want to say this. I want to make it perfectly clear. If you're wearing... A black, if you're wearing a black, if you're a black person mm-hmm. and you're wearing a Donald Trump mugshot, you are a freaking idiot. Mm. And I'm only saying freaking idiot because they won't let me say what I really want to say. But you can figure it out. It starts with an F. Uh, fun and idiot. Uh, he's just backpedaling. That's all he's doing. Because, yeah, he got some, he got some backlash on that. Wow. Uh, whatever. You know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. I so, saw some, you care there, really there about. Some, there were some great posts from uh, a large black men that said, uh, with a Donald Trump T-shirt on, that said, "Where are you at, Charles?" <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, yeah, because they weren't right pleased here. that he was going to punch him in the face because they had I, that. I'm right they here, had that on. Chuck. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, there's a new chair of the Republican Party. It's um, Michael Watley. And here's what he said about election integrity for this November. We have also hired and placed election integrity directors in battleground states who are already recruiting and training tens of thousands of volunteers to serve as poll judges, workers, Mm -hmm. and observers who will act as real-time monitors whenever votes are being cast and counted. And we will do more. If our voters don't have confidence that our elections are safe and secure, Nothing else matters. We will work relentlessly in every state to ensure that it is easy to vote and hard to cheat. Uh huh. Sure. Okay. We'll, we'll see. Hope that's uh-huh. true. Mm-hmm. I hope it's true. We'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, again, we'll, we have we'll, seen no evidence of it so far, but okay. Will Joe Biden receive more or less, or maybe exactly 81 million votes again? That's going to be the number I'm interested in on in November. I don't know. You seem to have a theory on that. What's your? What are you alluding to? No, I'm just wondering. Like, oh, okay. like, what is the magic number for Joe Biden this year? Mm, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't know. I mean, that's Trump's uh, big push, though, right? To, too big to rig, mm-hmm. right? To like, win. in other words, if he can get enough support, mm-hmm. then there's, there's no, no way chance that they, that, right, they, right. They, they can't rig. That's it why I wonder what that number is for Joe. Like, what's that magic number going to be? Well, Trump, according to the uh, survey that I was reading about how he leads on all of these issues, yeah, uh, they've also they also polled the seven key swing states, and Trump leads in every single one of them. Uh, in swing states like Arizona, it is Trump leading Biden forty nine forty three, forty nine forty three in Georgia, forty six forty four in Michigan. In Nevada, still too close. it's 48-42, which is a, a nice lead there. 50-41 in North Carolina, 49-43 in Pennsylvania, and 46-42 in Wisconsin. Uh, that's Trump, Trump up in all of those? Up in all of them. Hmm. All seven key swing states. Uh, let me see what... Uh, I do not recall what, poll this is. what the polls were like. ABC Ipsos. Right yeah, I don't either. On the election eve. I would like to yeah, I don't, I don't remember either, but... Uh, that's according to, it's not Fox News, it's ABC. So, I don't well, know. That's his network. Yeah, I know. That's Joe's network. Yep. <laughs> They're all Joe's networks. Uh, <laughs> uh, Rand Paul 
Concerned a little bit about the uh, six thousand plus earmarks in the new spending bill. Ah, come on, he's, he's always come on. I now. know spending, spending, blah blah blah. Uh, the spending bill being considered by the Senate contains more than six thousand earmarks, detailed over six hundred and five pages. Includes four million dollars for a waterfront walkway in New Jersey. Awesome. How long we've we been clamoring for that? That's- Forever. 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 Uh, three and a half million for Detroit's Thanksgiving Parade Float Makers new headquarters. <laughs> well, what are they supposed to do? <laughs> Work out of a garage? <laughs> no. Okay. No, they're not. That There's is awesome. $1.75 million for the Met in New York City. Yeah. The Metropolitan Museum of Art. Fixing up. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. A million for an environmental justice center in New York City. Uh, just five hundred thousand dollars for some gardens in San Francisco. Excellent! Wow, this is that's just chump change. <laughs> this is killing me, man. Gardens in San Francisco. One million. Oh, the homeless need a place to go to the bathroom. One million to a nonprofit in Minnesota to build a coffee shop and a greenhouse for refugees. Oh, yeah. oh all right. Yeah. Isn't that nice. That's nice. That's good. Man. Another million dollars to help San Francisco organic dairy farmers. Okay. Awesome. Five hundred thousand dollars for a cyber crime vehicle I want to be for clear. the Honolulu do, Police Department. I do not want San Francisco's organic anything. You don't? No. Okay. No. Well then, I can't give you the million dollars. No. I can't. Shoot. Can't do it. One point two million for a bike path resurfacing. So they already have the bike path. They just need it resurfaced oh in Rhode my. Island. I've got some roads in my neighborhood that need to be resurfaced. Amen. $209,000 for HVAC replacement for the Charlestown Opera House oh, in about, West Virginia. Oh, about time. They have to Finally, have that. yeah. Yeah, you yeah. have to have that's that. Been a, that's been a, an issue for it a while. It actually has, yeah. especially since COVID, since yeah, the pandemic. Yeah, right, right. When's the last time you were there? Do you remember... <laughs> like what kind of condition it was? It was in? not good. I was, was not it, happy. I was, was it too all, hot all or too cold? That it was. Uh, hey, wait. Yeah. This was an opera house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So hold on a second. I'm sorry. I think the bigger news here. No offense, West Virginia, but you have an opera house in West Virginia. <laughs> that's uh, that's fascinating. You know, I yeah. was actually on uh, Pat had Fury and Energy's podcast yesterday, and he had a great question uh-huh. for the guests, and it was, if you could rewrite any part of the Constitution, what would it be? And I told him, it's got to be the Tenth Amendment. Because the Tenth Amendment doesn't go far enough. It should say that any expenditure not specifically listed in the Constitution then goes to the states. Because then Mm -hmm. this stuff isn't in bills like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a nightmare. I mean, this is why we're in trillions of dollars worth of debt. Well, it's exactly why. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other good things? Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, these are just ten of the the wonderful things. Yeah, there's a... I mean, there's... Thousands more, obviously, mm-hmm. over six thousand more. Uh, so there's a lot. Yeah, there's so a lot. nothing right. on lesbian studies. Yeah, oh, there's oh, some. Sure. Oh, of course, okay. so what do you mean nothing at on this a... particular time? Of course, yeah. there's I mean, well, lesbian well, studies. I mean, there's not enough time in the program to get to all the lesbian. It's got to be funding. trans studies. It has uh, to be. Yeah, like a biological male getting pregnant yeah. studies. Right. I need some of that grant. Many habits yeah. of. Um, there's no doubt about that. Of, That's. That's good grant money to get, too, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> Jeez. We are in hell. <laughs> good stuff. Last night were the Oscars. Anybody watch? Yeah, I watched a little bit of it. I forgot. You did? Much. Yeah, a little bit. You stop. I mean, I've watched the clips a lot this morning. Um, <sighs> you know, congratulations to... Uh, Emma you know, Stone. Yeah, good job. To Oppenheimer. Op of the heap. Uh, mm-hmm. That was the headline, no, I believe, for the... No. Cute. That's adorable. No. I know. That's stupid. I know. Mm-hmm. They won seven. Good for them. Oppenheimer uh, took the Oscar for best movie. Yep. Uh, it got seven, in fact. Yep. Seven Oscars last yeah, night. That's... Cillian Murphy won for best actor uh, in Oppenheimer. Uh, you know, did did you see Oppenheimer? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody liked it? I loved it. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Oh, okay. Uh, really good movie. Yeah, I, really I enjoyed movie. the heck out of it. <laughs> Pat realized we weren't 20 years into the future, so don't ask Right, Kate. I didn't even ask. <laughs> <laughs> he looked, I, I did look over did though, it? and realized, oh, oh yeah, I haven't seen oh, it. No. I'm talking about Keith. It's not 2044 yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get 2044, yeah. we'll yeah. ask him. Yeah. Uh, hey, my, my no buddy. No wonder got seven Oscars. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, yeah my, uh, good. Well, let me, let me back up. Uh, fun trivia. I just learned this morning. Uh, who has the most Oscars of all time? One individual. Who, who would you think? Hmm. 
Most Oscars of all time. I don't remember. Oscars. I remember seeing this a while ago. Oh, oh is it Meryl Streep? No. No, no. it's no. some some other Dingleberry. Right? Yeah, some you got well, it. If you it's, nailed it. If it's yes. not Meryl Streep, so, yeah, it is some, some other, other yes, Dingleberry. Dingleberry. That's what you he said. I got it. That. Thank you. I know. Well <laughs> no, my, my buddy uh, Ed McRae, who's a Disney guru, uh, informs <clears> me that it's Walt Disney. Really? Is the uh, all-time individual record holder. 26 Oscars. Holy cow. I would never have guessed that. Yeah. Like wow. I said, some, some other, other Dingleberry. Dingleberry. Some and other you were exactly right. <laughs> Thank you. It. You're exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Oppenheimer won, and then what's Barbie. your what's your what's your actor and actress, and then we're done. Uh, <laughs> that's all I mean. I, actress they, was Emma Stone for Poor Things. Yeah, they didn't give it to uh, already said Lily they, Gladstone. No, no, they didn't. And all the other award shows gave it to her for yes, Killers of the Flower Moon and racist. Uh, yes, uh, racism. Right. Uh -huh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's what they're going to scream. Absolutely. Right? Well, the Flower Moon, they got blocked out at the Oscars, huh. and that couldn't happen to a nicer group oh, of so people. Yes. Yeah. Well, they didn't that group of people even come dressed in their tribal regalia? One of them. One of the Osage did. dancers. Wonderful. Yeah, the Osage dancers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the Godzilla movie won for special effects. Oh, did yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Uh, supporting actor and actress, Divine Joy Randolph for the holdovers was best supporting actress and then uh robert downey, downey jr, jr. Yep. yeah for, for he deserves that he was really good yeah he was really good in the movie uh but seven overall for oppenheimer uh i think barbie got none i think they got one one oh they did yeah for, uh, the dude what's his name uh ryan gosling uh, yeah for what because no they got no. it for something else though. yeah something else some minor award yeah. wasn't it yeah they threw him a bone for something yeah Ooh. all right Okay, for 10 years, Patriot Mobile has been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider, and they are fantastic. Glenn and the team have been great supporters of this show, and that's one of the many reasons I'm really proud to partner with them. Uh, Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage. They give you the ability to access all three major networks, and that, of course, means you get the same coverage you've been used to without funding the left. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're sending the message that you support free speech and religious freedom, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment, and our military and veterans and first responders. They have a 100% U.S.-based customer service team, and they make switching really easy for you. You can keep your number if you want, you can keep your phone, or you could upgrade. Their team will help you make the best, uh, figure out which plan is best for you and your needs. Go to patriotmobile.com slash pat or... Call 972-PATRIOT. You get free activation when you use the offer code PAT. Join me and make the switch today. It's patriotmobile.com slash PAT, patriotmobile.com slash PAT, or 972-PATRIOT. Pat Gray. Join the conversation, 888-900-3393. Pat Gray Unleashed. We'll be right back. Triple eight, nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat unleashed on Twitter. Uh, Liz Cheney and the January sixth committee suppressed evidence that uh, could help exonerate Donald Trump huh. on January sixth. What hmm. about July sixth? Can we exonerate him for that? No, <laughs> no. There's no getting past January, uh, July sixth. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, apparently they had more evidence of Trump requesting National Guard troops, 10,000 of them he pushed for. Well, well, well. 10,000 troops to protect the nation's capital. A previously hidden transcript obtained by the Federalist shows that. Huh. Cheney and her committee falsely claimed that they had no evidence to support Trump yeah. officials' claims that the White House had communicated its desire for 10,000 National Guard troops. She's still hmm. babbling about that. Yeah, I know. I know, they're such lying sacks. In fact, an early transcribed interview conducted by the committee uh, included precisely that evidence from a key source. The interview, which Cheney attended and personally participated in, was suppressed from the public release until now. Uh, wow. 
How often do we have to hear these kinds of stories? I know. It's almost like they had an agenda. Isn't it almost it, like that? Like, it's it like, you know, it can't be that, like but that. it's all it, like most. Yeah. <laughs> like they're trying it to pull is. a fast one on us. Can't be. Huh. It can't. No, you know, it's the government, right? It can't be. Well, and it's Liz Cheney. And Who Liz Cheney. Awesome. Right. It's like her dad, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful man that he is. That he is. Uh, and, you know, they've been so forthcoming with us on everything. Yes, they have. Um, apparently, the, the Pentagon is telling us now that they found oh. no evidence. No, that's correct. Of a UFO or alien cover-up. So why don't you just shut up? Yeah, they released a report uh, from the Pentagon's All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, huh. A-A-R-O. Very catchy. Arrow, as I like to call it. Mm-hmm. Well, but you're on the inside. There was a an, a UFO over Oklahoma just last week. Was right? there? Yeah, there was. Watch. Look at this. You tell me. Oh, that's a UFO. Oh. Or is it the moon? Oh, look, somebody. Wow. That's a UFO. Look, it's separating from itself. Oh, yeah. No, that's a What the hell is that? Kid's right. That's a UFO. Listen, listen It's shooting listen. out some sort of... Sound wave. Oh, man. Sound wave. What? what is that? Like some sort of like pulse energy or something. That is wild, like, dude. That's pretty intense, huh? Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, play that back. Maybe we can mute Johnny and Billy. <laughs> yeah. But look at that. So it's like it's almost like if you're listening, it's almost like this huh. orb of light just blew out a smoke ring. Yeah. You know? Whew. Weird. It's very strange. Wonder what that is. But it's nothing. But it's nothing. But that's nothing. Arrow There's no told evidence. There's nothing. So, it makes me Quote, it. Arrow has found no verifiable <laughs> evidence that any UAP sighting has represented extraterrestrial activity. So we're done. Move along. Makes me want to have a cigarette. 63-page <laughs> uh, document, most sweeping rebuttal the Pentagon has issued in recent years yeah. to counter claims that it has information on extraterrestrial visits or technology. What happened to the... New honesty, the new openness, That's the new it. transparency. That's it. They've investigated it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So there you go. There you go. Nothing to worry about here. Was Liz Cheney in charge of this right. investigation as well? <laughs> Quote, Arrow has found no verifiable evidence that the U.S. government... <laughs> I love this. This is the weirdest sentence. Has found no verifiable evidence that the U.S. government or private <laughs> industry has ever had access to extraterrestrial technology. Uh, Arrow has found no indications that any information was illegal or inappropriately withheld from Congress. So, I mean, what are we doing here? Just I don't know. Strange it's crazy. Quotes. Uh, Major General Patrick Ryder, Defense Department spokesperson, said the Pentagon approached the report with an open mind. <laughs> of course <laughs> they <laughs> did. That, why did. That goes without saying. It does. I don't even know why they said it. No preconceived notions, mm -hmm. but simply found no evidence to yeah. back up claims of secret programs, hidden alien technology, or anything else. And that's why we dropped this report on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All investigative efforts at all levels of classification concluded that most sightings were ordinary objects and phenomena and the result of misidentification. <laughs> yeah, see, it's your fault, dummies. Most of these cases could also be identified and resolved as ordinary objects or phenomena. Okay. Okay? So I don't want to hear it anymore. Moving along. I mean, this is what they said in the 50s in the first place. It's we're, a, when it, we're right back to that. That's what it reads like. Yep. We're right back to the 50s with this yep. stuff. All right. <laughs> Whatever. There's no UFOs. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Moving okay? along. I can't wait until we get to that. Friday show with the uh, MH370 flight. Yeah, did you see the new stuff? The the new report? Is that where you're headed? Mm, which, what, I don't know. What are you talking about? That it was uh, <laughs> a suicide? The, the, murder? Uh, are you talking, hold on. Did the report that they released, because the two things that I read before that may be different, that maybe it was flown to Kazakhstan. We knew that. Okay. We well, knew that. And then the debris that they said was from the plane, now they're admitting, yeah, it was probably put in the water about a year before it was discovered. So, no. Oh, no. They're saying, I read uh, the report, a, re, a story this weekend that mm -hmm. talked about how it, uh, the pilot had requested more fuel and extra oxygen for the cabin mm -hmm. and that he put it down 
and it was a suicide mm. murder, and he put it down in where he la- kind of almost landed it in the ocean, so mm-hmm. there would be no debris, mm. and it would sink in that deep mm. trench. Oh. And then where 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 they believe it went down is in the like this deepest trench of the ocean. There was could, absolutely no debris. It went down completely in one piece. Or he right. could have just... That's a good landing he job could have they the said, ocean. They, they Wait used a the, They used the wing huh. as an example in the story that they found. Okay. Because it had... They said that uh, um, the one flap was up mm-hmm. or down. One of the... Whatever way the flap was up would have meant that that's how... That's because it was landing. So the pilot wanted to kill himself and didn't just find a, a, a high building or Correct. a bridge. I see. So it was murder-suicide. Correct. Interesting. Why would you? Interesting. I don't know that you need to go through that much trouble and take no. people with you. But yeah, okay. kind of a bad dude, right? Yeah. Well. I mean, we've been down that road with the pilot thing uh, that it was murder-suicide for, well, since the like the next day they started saying that yeah. about the pilot. And then... You know, I like people... the, the the Kazakhstan stand, right? one of the stand landings. I like that one. Why? Because I, I feel like didn't we we the one the one person we talked to or the one video that I saw was uh, how it would have uh, how it could have disappeared and then gone there. Right, so we would have because of the uh, the way the um, the satellite thing or whatever yeah. could either be north or south. Mm. Yeah, that was what Jeff Wise was telling us. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we're going to, well, we'll explore that. All right, cool. Uh-huh. I mean, we need to revisit yes, this thing. Yes, we do. Because mm. uh, there's some really interesting theories. One where it just disappeared, and they have they have footage of it <laughs> from the satellite. <laughs> just disappeared. <laughs> right. Just gone. Gone. <laughs> we'll get into That's that awesome. much more. Uh, and more this morning, coming up. Going to the go. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. <laughs> oh. Amazing. <sighs> so it's, it's yeah. I'm gonna do the Pat Five. Yeah, you're gonna do a Fat Five because Pat decided he was gonna boycott this segment because uh, he heard you had a Fat Five. I I and so he just I left. I mean, I'm here on a Monday. And- yeah, right. Here on a Monday, and I even what do you I got for us? Broke down a fat five, and then he he, he, he boycotted. Like, oh, then I'm out of here. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. It was so rude. <sighs> well, congratulations mm. and happy birthday to Rupert Murdoch, who's 93 today. Wow. Born March 11th, 1931, getting married again. Oh no! Uh, a spokesperson has confirmed the latest oh. engagement. Uh, engaged for the uh, sixth time to uh, Elena Zukova, how old? Who was 66. That's only, what, 26 years, 30, 26, 27, something like that. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I mean, love is love. Her, there is no age limit on love. Mm-hmm. Uh, her daughter was married to a Roman Abramovich, who is the U.S. government has described as the Russian oligarch. In fact, we seized his yacht. Oh, interesting. The wedding is set for June at his California estate and vineyard mm-hmm. called uh, Moraga. Now, if... It happens. It'll be his fifth marriage. Last April, remember, he was engaged to uh, Anne Leslie Smith, and then she started talking about the Bible, and he was like, Oh, oh that's uh, right. Have a nice day. Uh, I, right. I'm, I'm all in love, but uh, no Bible we're talk. not. Ooh, no. We, <laughs> he, is... he had a come to Jesus meeting <laughs> with Anne and said, No, 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 no. Ah, that is not happening. So. Anyway, congratulations yeah, and happy good. birthday to, to Rupert. And, uh huh. And, uh, That'll last for and Elena. Yeah. Decades. I just sure. want to tell Rupert, man, when you're done with Elena, if you're looking for somebody, hmm? I'm here for you. <clears throat> I'm here for you. That's good. Uh, we had Billy Joel and Stevie Nicks uh, performing this past well, weekend at uh, AT&T here in D- DFW. Oh, wow. That was the rescheduled concert from uh, last year. They rescheduled uh, several concerts because of the continued COVID illness within the band. Mm. I mean... They did all this in front of fifty-five to seventy thousand at AT&T. Not bad. Stevie is seventy-five now. Man, uh, she has sold sixty-five million copies as a solo artist, hundred and twenty million as a member of Fleetwood Mac, and Billy Joel, pff, only seventy-four. Yeah, I've heard of him. Has sold over hundred and sixty million copies worldwide. I mean, I was stuck singing Billy Joel songs all weekend long. Yeah, I couldn't, and you couldn't get it out of my. Sent the rest of head. us down that road as well. 
and uh, and you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have, uh, well, your girl, Heath Madonna, uh, <laughs> who will be here at DFW in a couple of weeks. She was performing in California this weekend, having her uh, stand-up Chuck moment. Oh, no. Attempting to shame a fan for sitting down during one of her concerts. Oh, no! Chuck is right with me. What are you doing sitting down over there? Uh, what are you doing sitting down? Why are you sitting down? She takes the mic. Why are you sitting down? Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. I'm glad you're here. Oh, okay. Politically incorrect. Sorry. Glad you're here. (laughs) Yeah, the fan was in a wheelchair. And, uh... Why, Stevie, why? get over your... Or I mean, uh, Madonna, get over yourself. Why do you care? I mean, you know, get over yourself. <laughs> uh, you. She wants the crowd to be on their feet. I don't care what she wants. Just let it go. <laughs> they paid money to be there. If they want to sit, let them sit. I know. I, I don't I, I don't care if he's handicapped or not. Ugh. Why did it have to be a he? Or she or whatever. I don't care. Okay. I just let him it's sit. Incredible. Just incredible. Uh, by all reports, this past weekend was a quiet one on Galveston Beach, uh, but all the people that were down at Galveston Beach near the Pleasure Pier oh. a week ago Sunday <laughs> were all freaked out at a chained-up coffin that appeared uh, oh, on no. the beach near the uh, Pleasure Pier. Photos, oh, no. photos of the casket began popping up on various uh, island-related social media pages. Uh-huh. That turned out it was just a promotional thing. But it's not even uh, Halloween. What's it for? Craig uh, Corbell, owner and CEO of Strand Area Tourist Attractions, yeah. Haunted Mayfield Manor, uh-huh. Pirates, Legend of the Gulf Coast, and okay. Baywatch Dolphin Tours. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it was just a promotion just for a- all three. We just wanted people to remember that we're here. That's fun. <laughs> uh, a reminder to subscribe to uh, my daily show, Chewing the Fat. Uh, Chewing the Fat with Jeff Fisher, available wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, Chewing the Fat with Jeff Fisher. What are you going to talk about today on Chewing the Fat? Oh, well, we got the Oscars, and I've got uh, Rich, uh, Rich World. Yeah, I have to talk about uh, a story about uh, a yacht. It's a, it, But it's not a yacht, it's a ship okay. that millionaires travel the world in oh wow that's pretty awesome okay actually. sounds fun if i were a millionaire i may mm-hmm. consider going on this ship mm-hmm. but i'm not uh glad to see uh, vegas uh continuing to follow the chewing the fat plan mm. uh professional sports stadiums dome uh danish architecture studio big has designed a baseball stadium in las vegas with a massive metal shell and the largest cable net glass wall in the world uh cited on the las wow. vegas strip designed by big in collaboration with uh hntb uh the a's the athletics uh which will be moving from oakland uh following the 2024 season so now, this stadium is completely indoors though yes right okay yeah uh the covered Nothing ball pick going to con- accommodate about 33,000 people a little small for me but you know we'll, they didn't ask me uh the dome will be clad in the shimmering metal made up of five overlapping forms with a glass wall hanging from one end that uh the studio said will be the largest cable net glass wall in the world wow yeah. uh, they uh will with direct sunlight blocked by the metal exterior while light will enter through the glass wall which flames the strip it looks Really, it really looks cool. Stunning. Yeah, it's the spherical armadillo. That's <laughs> uh, what it looks like. Uh, uh, but it will be, it will be really cool. And uh, the A's are hoping to move into the new 1.5 billion dollar stadium in 2028. Uh, so we so don't know. What are they going to play before then? Uh, they, we don't know they, yet. We don't know. they the guess is Sacramento. I was going to say Oakland fans show up in by the tens right now. <laughs> I don't know. if You want to do that for years? You know the. The Did guess you, is they're going to go. To, they're going to play uh, in Sacramento until they move to Vegas. Okay, very good. I know. Good luck. Have fun. Um, uh, I know. Did you see? Speaking of stadiums, did you see and the elements and being indoors and stuff? This is right to your point, Jeffy. Did you see all of the fans at the Kansas City playoff game yes. against the Dolphins, where the temperature was the fourth coldest ever? What was it? It was minus four kickoff, minus twenty seven wind chill. Uh, some of the fans were putting cardboard down to stand on because the concrete was so cold. I didn't realize that twelve. I didn't realize they had that. twelve fans with uh, with frostbite. 
I don't know if they all had amputations or not, but for sure, yeah. uh, w- well, for sure, one I remember seeing had an amputation. But I think I think uh, there were multiple. Do we know what's getting amputated? Just fingers, toes. The more? one I saw was like an arm. Oh no. Okay, so did we have stories like this in other historic? NFL I, games. I don't know. Like, are we just dumb now as a society? We don't know how to dress. I, That's I don't possible. Know. But on the other hand, uh, it does uh, it does bode to my to your let's thing. why are we why are we playing uh, professional sports in arenas that we do may not be have, too dumb to do not to, have a dome to be outdoors now. We may just be too dumb. That's what it is. We don't know how to dress. We don't know. That's I, what I, it I don't. Is. I don't know the situation for these uh, fans. But um, I don't know. And then, you know, speaking of football, did you see that Pat McAfee thought Lincoln Riley, he saw, well, he, he didn't know that Joe Biden said Lincoln Riley in yeah, his speech. I mean, Pat, I I am very, I watch Pat's show. Uh, Pat often. McAfee, uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, Pat McAfee, yeah. yes, not this show. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, not the Pat Gray show, but I do watch the Pat McAfee show often. And uh, he is, you know, he prides himself on tunnel vision on mm-hmm. sports. And so doesn't some, pay attention to politics, right? Right. And so you know it, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> at all. It doesn't surprise me at it's all. So now funny. there are times when I think, okay, I mean, Pat, come on now, you're you're smarter than that. You mm-hmm. know that. But I, you know, he really, uh, you know, he prides himself on that tunnel vision. I don't know. I think he knows. Uh, he just doesn't want to talk about it because it's a sports show and he wants to move on. Mm-hmm. Speaking of sports, though, I, as long as we're on sports, uh, I see where Amazon. Prime video, mm-hmm. uh, which is which I love their promotion coming off a sizable ratings uptick for Thursday night football in the second year of its exclusive rights deal. Uh, after trying out the first playoff game this year exclusively on a streaming service, uh, which they claim was a massive, massive success, uh, Amazon Prime Video will broadcast a wild card playoff game this next postseason. All right, the one on Peacock. Uh, Peacock paid for the postseason hundred for that frostbite million. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the hundred, they play a hundred and ten million, I think. And Amazon Prime is paying one hundred and twenty million dollars just to broadcast Oof. a playoff game. Oof. The NFL has yet to confirm whether there's going to be a Black Friday game, which Amazon paid a hundred million to air last year. Mm-hmm. And then Peacock said that they gained 2.8 million. Well, it was reported. Mm-hmm. I don't think Peacock actually reported this. It was reported from other outlets that they gained 2.8 million new subscribers, oh. and 23 million watched the Chiefs over the Dolphins. And and how many the let their subscription <laughs> go? Like how I many know. are still I know. subscribers? I know. Right. So uh, we get uh, we get the. Uh, CBS is scheduled to carry two wild card games. Fox one wild card game. NBC one wild card game uh, on Sunday night. ESPN on Monday night. All four broadcast partners will broadcast one divisional playoff game, and Fox still broadcasts Super Bowl. L I and Al Michaels X. may be done. Like we, we may never hear him broadcast a game again, right? I I, I don't know the, about anything about okay. that, but right. that that would surprise me. I. I Everybody ranted and raved about how good Al and Herb Street was, but they I are. was not one of them. Oh, well, you're a dummy then. Uh, they're they're thought, great. First of all, I thought you were boycotting this segment. Okay, so yeah, now you on? come in and what you're just going to call I've me a dummy. I've unboycotted to correct your <laughs> stupidity. Did you have to go work out or something? Done. You got to get I did, your yeah, yeah. weekly run. Actually, out. I had uh, I had low glucose all night long. Ooh. My alarm woke me up three times. Well, Ooh. me and my wife. Of course, uh, she was pleased. She was pleased and, about that. Well, <laughs> uh, so uh, this morning to try to combat that, I had Pepsi for the first time in oh. over a year, and I don't think my body can handle it anymore. Oh, uh, no. it made me really sick. Oh, uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, so uh, I was hmm. not feeling well. Glad you're back in here. And now well, here okay. I am. Okay, because good. you know, because being stuck in a room with just Jeffy. Yeah, for it's hard, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's hard. Yes. It's happened to me before. Yes, uh, I mean, it's, I'm just it's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> All right, let me tell you about uh, Raycon for a minute. Guess I'm done. No, we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. 
When I'm listening to uh, music or a podcast, I need my everyday earbuds. And you know, what's the best thing uh, to bring with me wherever I go? My Raycon everyday earbuds, of course. Raycons offer amazing quality, don't they? I love them, yeah. And they're half the price of the other premium audio brands. And if you don't believe me, uh, check out their thousands, tens of thousands of five-star reviews. Raycon's optimized gel tips are designed to fit comfortably in your ears to actually stay there. Because they have, I don't know, a whole bunch of them. I don't, I don't know exactly how many, but they provide you with a bunch of different gel tips, and you find the one that best fits your ear. And then it stays there, which is nice, because there's nothing worse than when they keep falling well, out of your ear. Out. I can't I handle know. that. My Raycons come with me everywhere I go, uh, in the car all the time, uh, at the airport, on flights, with eight hours of playtime, and 32-hour battery life. You don't have to worry about whether they're going to be up for the task. My favorite features are the three customizable sound profiles. They have noise isolation and awareness mode. Go to buyraycon.com slash unleash today. You'll get 20% off your Raycon order plus free shipping. That's right. 20% off and free shipping at buyraycon, B-U-Y, buyraycon.com slash unleash. Pat Gray Unleashed. All right. You had more of the... uh yeah, we, got a couple, yeah, we got a couple more stories right. here on the Fat Five. <laughs> what else uh, you got? I talked about this last week on Chewing, and it still has me wondering, what do they know? Uh, because uh, Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods have seen their share prices just plummet. Yeah, nobody uh, likes it anymore. Well, I think what they realized was it's not good for you, and it doesn't taste good. Okay. so <laughs> That's a I, bad combination. And, yeah, and I did not realize this, but uh, they, you know, they had a, a record high. Uh, in 2019, and their stock price, and that's plunged 96. percent Wow! I mean, they were almost wow. out of business. Oh my gosh! But my point is, is that Oscar Mayer is now rolling out a plant-based hot dog and sausage this year, with the help of a startup backed by Jeff Bezos. Hmm. Uh, the Kraft Heinz companies uh, are going to team up with the Not Company, a vegan-centered firm, to introduce. Hmm. The not hot dog and the not sausage. Not eating it. American consumers <laughs> will have an option, and it's not cheap. <laughs> it should be not uh, the not company is not cheap. Uh, Five ninety nine for a package of four plant based hot dogs. Seven ninety nine for four of the not sausages. Wow. And I don't even remember. I don't even recall seeing these on the shelves or you know on, in my grocery store. Um, I really haven't been looking for them, but uh, they said they're going to do this plant. They they last year or in 2022 they introduced a plant based Philadelphia cream cheese to appeal to the non dairy customers, and then they also released a plant based Kraft not mac and cheese mm. and a not mayo and cheese slices. That sounds really not good. <laughs> it mm-hmm. sure does. Not good. And it also, why would you call them uh, not hot dogs? Why would why wouldn't it just be the not dog? Uh, I don't mm-hmm. understand. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. I thought we were moving on from the plant based world, but apparently not. Mm-hmm. I mean, Heinz is buying into this mm. full force. It's weird when everybody else is struggling. I know. And they said that uh, they estimate uh, right now they had eight point three billion dollars worth of plant based food products, and they're estimating that it's going to be up to 19 billion by 2030 hmm. so they're going all in good luck okay. i mean i no mm-hmm. thank you yeah no no, no thank you Ooh, thank you and uh i see where rolls royce has unveiled a new addition to the uh, luxury car brand uh called the arcadia drop tail hmm. and i thought it was actually going to be a present for the Indian guy with the wedding. Remember they had the pre wedding uh in India for the kids yeah. and it was oh, yeah. a weekend and it cost yeah. hundred and fifty million dollars. And I thought that this because this rolls was commissioned to be made and it's now the most expensive car. And it was an unnamed client. And I thought, oh well then it's this guy, right? Mm-hmm. And uh it's uh 
closely resembled a 2019 hand-drawn rendering of a mm. bold statement two-seater, also maintaining mm. its unique nautical inspiration by the way of a lavish dayboat's wooden deck finish. It's classic mm. slender design. Oh, yeah, it's based on a yacht, right? Yeah, captivating yeah. V12 engine, 22-inch yeah. alloy wheels. Focuses on its aquatic-styled woodwork. The clock is cool, and it's uh, all, like uh, dozens of diamonds yeah. are in it. I mean, it's that's an expensive vehicle. And the you know the area behind uh, the doors evokes uh, that yacht's jib and the sail cowls. It does evoke that. It does. <laughs> and how much is it? Well, Pat, mm-hmm. it's, it's funny you ask. It's a lot. It's funny you ask because it was picked up by the. Uh, it was presented to the person who commissioned it in Singapore. Mm-hmm. So it's not not anyone that we know. Uh, oh, okay, it's not anybody that we <laughs> know, and it and it isn't <laughs> and it isn't the Indian guy. All right. Uh, hmm. So uh, this was uh, commissioned for thirty one million dollars. Yeah, I thought it was around thirty million. Yeah, that's an expensive car. Uh, <laughs> Can you imagine spending thirty one million dollars on a car? Jeez. I mean, Look, it's it looks great, but come on now. Out for that? Yeah. Uh, no, thank you. I know. I would rather have a not dog. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful. It is. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know. and I'm sure it rides nice. Yeah. So Rolls Royce. But, but, I mean, you could have a dang nice mansion for $30 million. Yeah, you could. Jeez. And so you're going to just drive that around uh, and get... Chips in it and dents. And oh, right. Put it in parking lots where people are going to bang into it and key it. Mm, <laughs> no. 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 no I don't you pull think up to so. the valet and have Jose oh, yeah. park it for you? No. No, thank you. No. <laughs> nope. No, I'm not going to do that. Sorry. Beautiful, though. <laughs> it is It is beautiful. It's would nice. I drive it and ride in it? Sure. Absolutely. If you want to give it to me? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, I would. Yes, I would. No mm-hmm. problem. I'm happy to do that for you. <laughs> Uh, So, have you seen the unpasteurized milk thing that's going on right now? Um, Apparently, uh, in 2008, Jason Schultz, who was running for the House of Representatives, was stunned to learn dairy farmers could get in trouble for selling milk. Yeah, that's what they're after. Yeah, the the uh, Amish Amish people, yeah. Right. The government's shutting them down. A local farmer had shown him the cease and desist letter he received from the Iowa Department of Agriculture for selling milk straight from his cows to friends and neighbors without pasteurizing it, you know, heating it up to kill the bacteria first. Um, But if you want milk that's raw, should you not be able to drink the milk? Yes, you should. It seems like it. I don't know. This is, or used to be. Used to be. Mm -hmm. America. There you go. And uh, you would think, if I want to buy it and take a chance, I should be able to buy it and take a chance. Thank you. So one of the first things uh, Schultz, a Republican, did uh, when he, upon winning was to introduce a bill to legalize the sale of so-called raw milk. Bill went nowhere. Wasn't too much of a surprise. Although uh, almost nobody in either party was interested in fighting a small army of big dairy lobbyists mm. and officials who lectured about the dangers of potentially <laughs> fatal bacteria. Moreover, the state had a longstanding prohibition on the sale of raw milk. In 1980, Iowa jailed 37-year-old dairy farmer Delbert Benowitz for 30 days for selling raw milk. Now, I That's not enough. That's not long that's enough. That's not enough. It's not long enough. It's not. You should be life in prison yeah, for absolutely. selling raw milk. Uh this Amish guy, this mm-hmm. farmer should never see the light of day again. Thank you. Should be in solitary confinement well, for the rest of his jail miserable yet, but he's life. On his way. He needs to be. He needs to be. Yeah. But Schultz didn't give up. He's been pushing the bill year after year. Very slowly over time, he's effe- he's attracted some supporters, uh, like Esther Arkfeld, who's a homeschooling mom. That's appropriate. And a dairy owner, turned grassroots leader, who argued oh, raw try, milk. They always try to make that sound so bad. Yeah. Uh, what, the homeschooling yeah. mom? Yeah. Always. Oh, of course. It's the homeschooling mom <laughs> yeah. that likes raw milk. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, last m- last May, Schultz's bill finally passed, legalizing the sale of raw milk milk directly from the farmer to the consumer. In a vote of 37-13 in the Senate, 64-35 in the House, wasn't even close. Um, what changed since 2008 
is an example of a larger change in American politics. The FDA and the CDC still say raw milk is dangerous and the state dairy lobby sent lobbyists to the Iowa Capitol to defeat the bill. But Iowa has flipped now and they're they're like, nope, people want to buy raw milk. They should be able to Good. buy raw so milk. So Big Cow has been defeated finally. Yes, finally. I mean, that's the bottom line in all of this. I mean, well, I can't, they haven't I, even been defeated. They're just, they're just, it's okay right. if people Thank want you. to buy it. It's ridiculous. Thank you. Thank you. I know. But that costs some money because if I'm buying raw milk directly from the farmer, I'm not buying your milk, which oh. is at the grocery store wow. and completely pasteurized and safe. And you're homeschooling your damn kids. And I, we can't have that. <laughs> right. Oh. Can't have it. Can't have it. Fortunately, my kids are all grown now and uh, they can buy their raw milk or not. <laughs> Somewhere else. You wouldn't disown them if they if, no. you, if you walked into their not. home and they had raw milk there? <laughs> I probably wouldn't drink it, but <laughs> I wouldn't disown them either. This is no. not <laughs> no. Sorry, not touching that. <laughs> you ever had raw milk? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, man. Oh, oh milk. Man. Delicious. Mm. Thank you. This is Pat Gray Unleashed.